Don't be intimidated by what you don't know. That can be your greatest strength and ensure that you do things differently from everyone else. My dad encouraged us to fail. Growing up, he would ask us what we failed at that week. If we didn't have something, he would be disappointed. It changed my mindset at an early age that failure is not the outcome, failure is not trying. Don't be afraid to fail. I feel like money makes you more of who you already are. Embrace what you don't know, especially in the beginning, because what you don't know can become your greatest asset. It ensures that you will absolutely be doing things different from everybody else. Having a mental snapshot of where you are, where you are going, and what you are moving toward is incredibly powerful. I think failure is nothing more than life's way of nudging you that you are off course. My attitude to failure is not attached to outcome, but in not trying. It is liberating. Most people attach failure to something not working out or how people perceive you. This way, it is about answering to yourself. Failure is not the outcome, failure is not trying. Don't be afraid to fail. You've got to visualize where you're headed and be very clear about it. Take a Polaroid picture of where you're going to be in a few years. Where I get my energy is, how can I make it better? The smartest thing I ever did was to hire my weakness. My advice for an entrepreneur just starting out is to differentiate yourself. Why are you different? What's important about you? Why does the customer need you? With every obstacle that has happened to me in my life, my brain immediately says, where is the hidden blessing? In starting a business and growing a business, every day is learning how to manage obstacles. Don't let what you don't know scare you because it can become your greatest asset. And if you do things without knowing how they have always been done, you're guaranteed to do them differently. Ensure that you do things differently from everyone else. When I was growing up, my dad would encourage my brother and I to fail. We would be sitting at the dinner table, and he would ask, so what did you guys fail at this week? If we didn't have something to contribute, he would be disappointed. When I did fail at something, he'd high-five me. What I didn't realize at the time was that he was completely reframing my definition of failure at a young age. To me, failure means not trying, failure isn't the outcome. If I have to look at myself in the mirror and say, I didn't try that because I was scared, that is failure. Most of the reason we don't do things is because we're afraid to fail. I just made a decision one day that I was not going to do things in my life because of fear. I think failure is nothing more than life's way of nudging you that you are off course. If we can put a man on the moon, we can make pantyhose comfortable. Instead of failure being the outcome, failure became not trying. And it forced me at a young age to want to push myself so much further out of my comfort zone. I'd never worked in fashion or retail. I just needed an undergarment that didn't exist. It's really a full-time job to manage our lives. Whatever you can think, you can create, just have a very clear vision. Once you have your snapshot, work on filling in the blanks to get to that place. Perseverance is the key to starting a successful business. I'd get kicked out of buildings all day long, people would rip up my business card in my face. It's a humbling business to be in. But I knew I could sell, and I knew I wanted to sell something I had created. I cut the feet out of those pantyhose and I knew I was onto something. This was it. Failure to me became not trying versus not succeeding. 
If somebody can do something 80% as good as you think you would have done it yourself, then you've got to let it go. My first account was Neiman Marcus. I cold called them just like I had cold called businesses when I was selling fax machines for seven years. The thing about fashion, it's like ducks going quack, quack. It's being dictated from above, and it just makes me want to rebel against it. Courage is doing something despite the fear, and I've worked hard on being a courageous person. Ideas, even million dollar ones, are most vulnerable in their infancy, don't share them with too many people. However, don't hide your plan from people who can help you move it forward. I made a conscious decision not to tell anyone in my life. Now I tell people, don't tell anyone your idea until you have invested enough of yourself in it that you are not going to turn back. When a person has an idea at that conception moment it is the most vulnerable, one negative comment could knock you off course. You've got to embrace what you don't know. Eminem's Lose Yourself is my go-to song to pump myself up if I'm having a tough time or if I get really nervous right before a speech. We don't have the luxury of time. We spend more because of how we live, but it's important to be with our family and friends. I'm obsessed with the customer. I am the customer. I really don't think you can go wrong if you don't take your eye off of that. Serving the customer. How does she feel? I feel like the fashion industry has cared a lot about how we look but not about how we feel. Don't be intimidated by what you don't know. Money is fun to make, fun to spend and fun to give away. I started thinking about joy. Everything in our society is so purposeful. Let's bring joy back to the experience. When something I can't control happens, I ask myself, where is the hidden gift, where is the positive in this? I think very early on in life we all learn what we're good at and what we're not good at, and we stay where it's safe. The thought of my mortality, I think about it a lot. I find it motivating. It can be any time that your number's up. I knew that I wanted to start my own business. I knew that I wanted to work for myself. I was no stranger to the word no. You just have to keep going. It's important to be willing to make mistakes. The worst thing that can happen is you become memorable. What you don't know can be your greatest asset. I always joke and say I want to invent a comfortable stiletto and then retire. I didn't want women to walk out of the dressing rooms feeling depressed and wanting a cocktail. What I most identify with is effortless fashion, looking as if someone's not put a lot of effort into their look. Don't solicit feedback on your product, idea, or your business just for validation purposes. You want to tell the people who can help move your idea forward, but if you're just looking to your friend, co-worker, husband, or wife for validation, be careful. It can stop a lot of multi-million dollar ideas in their tracks in the beginning. Everything in our society is so purposeful. Embrace what you don't know. Most of us want to tell our co-workers or friends, or husbands or wives, our ideas. For what reason? We want validation. But I feel ideas are most vulnerable in their infancy. Out of love and concern, friends and family give all the reasons or objections on why you shouldn't do it. I didn't want to risk that. Failure is not attached to outcome, but in not trying. This way, it is about answering to yourself. Don't let what you don't know scare you because it can become your greatest asset. 
failures are life's way of nudging you and letting you know you are off course. Trying new things and not being afraid to fail along the way are more important than what you learn in school. I couldn't figure out what to wear under my clothes. The body shapers were too thick at the time. Every time I went on stage I was so terrified I almost threw up. I grew up in a house where my father encouraged my brother and me to fail. I specifically remember coming home and saying, Dad, Dad, I tried out for this or that and I was horrible, and he would high-five me and say, way to go. I took a fear of flying class, and I always missed the class, because I was always flying. I pledged to invest in women because I believe it offers one of the greatest returns on investment. I am committed to the belief that we would all be in a much better place if half the human race, women, were empowered to prosper, invent, be educated, start their own businesses, run for office essentially be given the chance to soar. I've always leaned toward a feminine, funky style, even in business settings. I used to paint my nails blue in 1993, before it was mainstream. I have this system where if I buy three or four new things, I give away three or four things. Sometimes, it's a very painful system, but shopping is even better when you know that someone else who needs it will be getting. Keep the clothing karma going, I say. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.